Hello everyone, it is Stephanie Pontu. Welcome back to English class. I'm so glad you're here. This is the Vision Church Level 2 class. And this is part 3 of the class for Wednesday, June 3rd. Okay, and in this class we're still in Unit 10, which is our last unit. And we're finishing up Lesson C. We're going to be on page 127. But before we start that, I wanted to go ahead and assign homework for you. Um, homework is going to be pages 110 to 113 in your, um, in your student workbook. And that will finish up the homework for Unit 9. I don't want to let us get too far behind on the homework. So our homework, page 110 to 113 in the student workbook. Okay. All right. Fabulous. So let's get going with today's lesson. We're on page 127 and we've been talking about asking and answering questions with direct and indirect objects. Okay. All right. So get your student book. Let's go to page 127. All right. So what are all these things on page 127? You see all these things? What are those things? Presents or gifts. Remember, and we could always go back to Celia's graduation party and people brought her gifts or presents, same thing. So yes, yeah, so these are presents. So let's just read what uh, all these things are. Number one, some balloons. Number two, a card. Number three, some flowers. Number four, some cookies. Number five, some perfume. Number six, some books. Number seven, some money, which is my favorite gift. Because <laughs> you can go and get what you want, right? Okay, and then number eight, a gift card. I like gift cards too, if they're to a place that I like to go to. All righty. So, so what we're going to do here is we are going to talk with a partner, change the bold words, and make conversations. Now, I'm your partner, of course, since we're doing online classes, and it's just going to allow us to get some more practice in asking and answering questions using direct and indirect objects, okay? All right, but before we get going, let me read the useful language box for you. It's this little blue box right here. So useful language. So I becomes me if it's an indirect object in the sentence. Um, he becomes him. She becomes her, and they becomes them. So let me give you like, um, let's see, hold on. All right, so, so I read the useful language box, those pronouns. So like the first example, now I don't have my glasses, and uh, so it's hard for me to read the names on the little tags for these gifts right here. But I think on this first one, it's oof, Daniel and Maria. I think that gift tag says to Daniel from Maria. Really hard for me to read. Um, one of these, I had to make up names because I just could not read it at all. Uh, it was number six. I don't know if you can read that on those books but I cannot so all right but anyway so number one 
It's to Daniel from Maria, okay? And Daniel is a name that um, is usually a name for a boy or a man. So it's a, a name for a male. A boy, a man, a male. Okay, so in the useful language box. So if you were talking about a a man as your direct object, you could say him. So in this example, what did Maria give Daniel? Now, when you answer, answer that question, you're going to want to use a pronoun for Daniel. And because Daniel is male, he is the pronoun for a male. It becomes him if it's the indirect object in the sentence. So what did Maria give Daniel? She gave him some balloons. That's nice. Okay, so you see, he becomes him if it's the direct object in the sentence. And since Daniel is a he, meaning a male, you use the pronoun you would use would be him. So, all right, this direct object and indirect object, you might find it a little confusing, um, but I'm, I'm doing my best to explain it in a way that makes sense to you. So, let me give you some example sentences. That's always helpful. Um, so, Get my Sharpie. Hold on one moment. Oh, gosh. Okay. Okay, where did Daniel go? Okay, and to answer that question, he went home. I use the pronoun he because Daniel is a male, right? And this in, in this particular sentence, there are no objects. There are no objects in this sentence because nothing is being given to anyone. Okay? So, but another sentence, how about... Uh, what did... You give Daniel. Okay, that's the question. What did you give Daniel? The answer is I gave him some money. Now you notice in this sentence, I used him. Because him in this sentence, there is there are objects in this sentence. Him is a direct object because he received some money, which is a direct object. And remember, direct object answers the question of what indirect is who. So I hope, I really hope that helps. So that's the difference. I used him. In this sentence, because in this sentence, it's a direct object. I mean, it's an indirect object, and this is a direct object. In this sentence here, there are no objects. Nothing's being given. So he is what I use as the pronoun for Daniel, who is a male. So where did Daniel go? 
he went home. No objects in this sentence at all. But this sentence, what did you give Daniel? My answer, I gave him some money. There are objects in this sentence. The direct object is some money, because that's what I gave him. And who did you give it to? Him. So it's him. We switch the pronoun to him. I hope that helps. I don't know if it does or not, but. All right. So maybe some more examples will make this direct and indirect object thing clearer for you. Okay, so we've got the useful language. So that's those are the pronouns you want to use if there is objects in the sentence. So for our practice sentences, they there will be. All right, so I'm going to erase this. All right. So the example some balloons. The name tag has to Daniel from Maria. What did Maria give Daniel? She gave him some balloons. That's nice. Here's the second, number two. Okay, I can't read this. So I, I was able to read it earlier, so I wrote it down. It's to Maria from Paula. So what did Maria, what did Paula give Maria? What did Paula give Maria? So number two, she gave her a birthday card. Okay, and there are objects in this sentence. What? Birthday card? That's a direct object. And Paula is a female, a girl, a woman. So she gave her, that's the pronoun you would use to replace Maria. That's the direct object. Okay, so that's how that sentence would go. She gave her a birthday card. Okay, picture number three. Okay, I can read that, Sarah and Peter. What did Peter give? Sarah. That's what the sentence is for number three. What did Peter give Sarah? He gave her some flowers. Number four, Muhammad. What did Muhammad give Raya? He gave her some cookies. All right. Picture five, let's see, Caroline and Tom, I think. So what did Tom give Caroline? He gave her some perfume. All right, number six. I can't read those names with or without my glasses. So I made up some names for number six. What did Stephanie give Cameron? And Cameron is my son, my older son who loves to read. So that's why I picked his name because it was books. That was the gift. Okay, so number six. What did Stephanie give Cameron? She gave him some books. 
So him was the appropriate pronoun because there's an object in that sentence, right? She gave him some books. All right. The direct object is some, I mean, the direct object is some books. And because it's an indirect object, we use him. Because Cameron is a male name. Most of the time. Although there, are, I have met a woman named Cameron. All right, number seven. What were those names? What did Amy and Mark give David? So Amy and Mark. What did Amy and Mark give David? So what pronoun would you use for Amy and Mark? What did Amy and Mark give David? All right. So we want a pronoun for Amy and Mark. We need it to be plural, right? They gave him some money. I mean, personally, I think that's the best gift. Okay, money is the direct object because that's what was given to him, and that's the indirect object. So they gave him some money. All right. And then number eight, those names are Susan and Sam. What did Susan, or what did Sam give Susan? I think that's what it says. It's so hard to read. So we'll just go with Sam and Susan. What did Sam give Susan? He gave her a gift certificate. Okay? All right. So now we're going to make sure I did everything. Okay, so that's it for ex that exercise. So exercise three says communicate. Choose three classmates and choose three items from your desk and give one thing to each classmate, then complete the chart. So if we were in class together, I would have broken, put you guys into groups and I will have given everyone one object. And what you were gonna do, we're gonna give your object to someone in your group and you're gonna write that in your chart. The left side was gonna be your classmate's name, the other people in your group, and the right side was gonna be what you gave them. And then you're gonna practice talking about that, creating sentences. So I'm just gonna give you maybe one or two example sentences since we're not together. Um, <clears throat> So the example down there, talk with a partner, share your information. So let's pretend we're in class. I gave everybody one object, and now you're going to talk about it. So Anika is the name that's in the table, and the item was the Ventures book. So I gave Anika my Ventures book, and then the partner would say, I gave Rudy my pen. And then you politely ask for your things back. Anika, please give me my ventures book. And then the other person would say, Rudy, please give me my pen. 
Okay, and some of these other examples that I wrote down was I gave Khan my phone. Now I'll say Khan, please give my phone back. <laughs> Okay, all right, so that's practicing a little bit more practice with the indirect and direct objects and then choosing the correct pronoun to replace the person's name in your answer. So hopefully this class, this lesson was not too confusing for you, but my last class, this direct and indirect object lesson was a little confusing for them. So I hope you got something out of this lesson. If it was confusing, call me and let's talk. Some things are kind of better explained and talked about um, so that you can ask me questions. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. Take care. Stay safe. Don't forget to do your homework. Page 110 to 113. Let's see. And uh, we will go over it in our next class. Stay safe. Don't forget to leave a comment on YouTube. Bye.